A lot of good stacking options for tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball. Despite it being just a seven-game slate, there are probably six or so teams you could really justify stacking for tonight. Inherently, if there are a lot of stacks in a seven-game slate, that probably means pitching is thin, and that is very much the case for today. In fact, my third-ranked pitcher is not currently in the player pool. So we're going to break down what that means, who that is, and how to play things for tonight in Daily Fantasy Baseball by talking through those pitchers, talking about stacks, and getting you ready for Monday night. Welcome on into the solo shot that's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Monday's seven-game main slate with locks up for 6.40 p.m. Eastern for today. And on this slate, no weather notes, a couple of retractable roofs are going to save us in certain spots, so no games to worry about, no massive temperature discrepancies, a bit cooler in San Diego, but outside of that, pretty uh, green lit for this entire slate, so we're Good to play things straight and uh, play the best plays. We'll talk about who those are in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We, of course, are here every weekday talking about MLB DFS PGA podcast for the RBC Canadian Open is coming up tomorrow via myself and Brandon Gadula. And of course, USC for select events as well, all right here in the same podcast feed. So go search for the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. Wherever you get your podcast, hit subscribe. And if you like what you hear, leave us a five star rating as well. It is almost time to crown an NBA champion, and FanDuel wants you to be part of the excitement because right now, new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. There's no better place to bet all the finals action than America's number one sportsbook, FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Monday main slate. Aaron Nola checks in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is 10000 flat, followed by Blake Snell at ninety five. We got Braxton Garrett at 9000 with Martin Perez, Johan Oviedo, and Brandon Belak as the others at $8,000 or higher. So as you can hear there, it is definitely thin at the top for pitchers for today. And... I think the saving grace in this slate is that Aaron Nola has shown signs of life recently where his, uh, he was struggling to open this year. I think it was potentially due to pitch clock stuff, given how slow he pitched in the past. And it made sense that he would struggle, but he's bounced back recently. He's facing the Tigers for tonight. I think it's a good spot to feel good about him as our top ranked pitcher here. It is a fantastic matchup here at Detroit. 74 WRC plus against righties, 103 ISO. Both those are easily the worst on the main slate. Nola has made some tweaks to his repertoire since his slow start. Over his past seven starts, he's using more sinkers and fewer forcing fastballs. For a lot of pitchers, that is not good for DFS because sinkers are low with pitches, and that is also true for Nola. But for whatever reason, it does work for him. It's worked for him in the past, and it has helped him here as well because in that time with more sinkers, he has a 3.88 skill interactive ERA. He has a 23% strikeout rate, which is not what he was last year, but it is better than he was his first four or so starts this year. And specifically the past couple of events, Nola has been getting a lot more. His strikeout totals the past three games have been 10, 7, and 5. Only two out of seven starts in the sample where the he's using more sinkers have come at home. He's at home tonight. 
He has had some fluky home road or some funky home road splits in the past. So that's a good thing. I have Nola projected for 6.2 strikeouts tonight, which could be a bit light, but I do feel good about it. And that's the top mark on the slate as well. So Nola will be popular, but I think he's worth it finally. So I would say use Nola, deviate from there as far as your stacks go, because he does make a lot of sense for tonight. Now, typically, I don't want to go to Braxton Garrett because his pitch count is limited, which does hurt his upside. But there's aren't a lot of guys in the slate who have a true ceiling. And I think that allows Garrett to be in play for tonight. Pitch count, definitely the biggest concern here for Garrett because he has not gone longer than 88 pitches in a start yet this year, which means he has gotten the quality start bonus on FanDuel just once the entire year, which absolutely hurts his appeal in a big way. But despite that, he's still getting strikeouts because he's been very efficient, especially recently. Over the past six starts, Garrett has thrown more cutters instead of four seamers, and that cutter has a 34% whiff rate, according to Baseball Savant. It's worked really well. He has a 26% strikeout rate in those six starts. His skill interactive ERA is 3.66, which is the best number on the slate. If we gave Garrett more length, he would be the top option above Aaron Nola for tonight. But even with the low pitch count, I still have Garrett projected for 5.9 strikeouts. That ranks third behind Nola and Blake Snell. But when you consider all the factors like, you know, opposing uh, opposing matchup uh, stuff like that, I feel like it does point towards Garrett being the better option. Garrett gets the Royals, you know, not a fantastic matchup because they're pretty good against lefties. And Snell gets a high strikeout match with the Cubs, but they also have a lot of guys who can bang lefties in there. So I prefer Garrett personally. If you want to go Snell, I get it. But I think Garrett is a solid play on this slate specifically for a salary of $9,000. Now, for the third slot, I could talk Snell because Garrett technically is our value play for tonight. But instead, I kind of want to talk about a guy who's not currently in the player pool. And I'm guessing he'll be added. Otherwise, I wouldn't talk about him. But that guy is Andrew Abbott. He's making his debut against the Brewers. And assuming he is eventually added on FanDuel, I think he's at least interesting for tonight. Abbott started this year back in double A. He had a 64% strikeout rate there. So shockingly, he got promoted, went to triple A. And across seven starts there, his strikeout rate was 35% with a 14.5% swing in strike rate. That's awesome, especially on this slate where there aren't a lot of strikeouts to be had. Abbott was not flawless. He walked too many guys. He let up a bit of hard contact. And that means he could struggle at Great American Ballpark because he's also kind of a fly ball pitcher. But the strikeouts are alluring on a slate where few guys can rack them up. He's facing the Brewers tonight. They just got Luis Arias back. Willie Adamas homeward in a rehab game as well. So he may be back here. So when you look at the Brewers numbers against lefties this year, those are, I would say, misleading based on the actual righties they will have available to them in the very near future. They're not going to be that bad, but they should still strike out a lot, which is kind of the appeal here. And Abbott has gone longer than 95 pitches in the minors. So he actually has more length and more projected pitches in my numbers than Braxton Garrett does. So I like Abbott enough to go there again, assuming he's eventually added. If not, Snell would be third for me, but really like to go have it if I get the chance to do so. So to me, pitching ranks for tonight are going to be Aaron Nola one, Braxton Garrett two, Andrew Abbott three. And then if I must, I will go Blake Snell uh, in the third slot if there is no Abbott added. Stacks, as mentioned, are pretty loaded. And that begins the Phillies. And the Phillies have not hit lefties so far this year at all. Um, and they're facing lefty and Joey Wentz for tonight. Their WRC plus is 83. I think. They might get a little kickstart here in a plus match, but I do like the Phillies for stacking in this situation. Wentz has struggled quite a bit this year. His ERA is 7.28 across 11 starts. He has a 5.62 expected ERA in large part because he's just letting up way too much hard contact. He's let up a 45% hard hit rate with a 40% fly ball rate. He's let up just nine home runs, uh, which is lower no a lower number than you'd think, but he did about three home runs in one game, so big games are very possible here in this matchup. Wentz has led a five-plus earned runs in five out of 11 starts, and the hard contact issues may be getting worse because his hard hit rate allowed is 57% across his past four starts. So the Phillies haven't hit lefties well so far this year. They did lose a key bat in Alec Bohm, who 
at ten cent lefties pretty well, also. So it's tough, but I do think it's a great matchup. So I'm gonna give the Phillies a spin here, rank them number one, and be high on them for tonight. Now the Bohm thing is a bummer because I don't use Bohm ever against righties, but I will definitely go there against lefties. So not having him out there is a bummer. But to account for Bohm going down. They promoted Drew Ellis, and Ellis, I think, is either a double dong or at least he had at least one home run uh, last night. He had uh, two home runs. So, yeah, double dong for for Drew Ellis last night. And if you remember Ellis from college, I think he went to Louisville. Um, pretty good hitter there. So not a huge surprise. Has not done it in the in the majors yet, but hit for power in AAA last year. Good power numbers in the minors this year. I would guess it's probably going to bat eighth or so, despite the double dong last night. But I think if you need salary to get to the key Philly bats uh, and to get to Aaron Nola, I would say that Ellis is a mighty fine play. It's not just points chasing based on the, uh, the two homer game last night, but I think he's pretty solid across the board. So Drew Ellis, it's not point chasing. I don't think to go there tonight, assuming he's batting probably eighth or so. Um, if he bats higher than sick, go all in, but um, eighth is still okay by me. So far stacking against Julio Tehran has not gone well. He's, uh, gone 11 innings across his two starts and has let up just one earned run. So maybe dumb for me to keep on going here, but I'm going to for today. Never been accused of not being dumb. So we'll try one more time and stack the Reds against Tehran here. Tehran has faced the Giants and the Blue Jays, two pretty good teams against righties, and he completely fooled both of them. But it does seem a bit fluky because he's let up a 39% hard hit rate, which is not super, super low. It's about average. He has a 12% strikeout rate with a 5.6% swinging strike rate and a 53% fly ball rate. So his expected ERA is good at 3.41, but his skill interactive ERA is 5.51. I tend to believe skill interactive ERA more in such a small sample. And this one says we can stack against him just based on what he's done in those two starts where he's had the great results. So the Reds are not great by any means. They have an 89 WRC plus against righties with a 128 ISO, but the park very, very nice. And it is also the warmest park on the slate with the temperature 81 degrees. So even though it hasn't worked out yet, I'm going to give it one more try stack against Tehran here. And if it goes, if it goes poorly again, we can reevaluate later on and decide if we want to uh, keep on going down this road. Now we talked about Matt McClain when he first got called up. And if you're looking at the results, he's been good. The power numbers have not been there. He has a 135 ISO against righties and just one steal so far, but the results have been good, and I don't think that's entirely something we should write off. And I think there's room for the power to grow, especially when he's playing at home. McLean is starting to strike out a little bit less, so I'm going to keep the faith in what he did in the lower levels. You could see that ISO, see the lack of steals in the majors, and not want to pay $34 for this guy, but personally, I'm pretty okay with it. So McLean... Hasn't fully clicked yet, but I still think is a guy we should feel okay using for tonight in DFS. And I think keeping faith in what he did in the minors and buying into that is the right way to go for tonight. For the third stack, we're going to stack week against Adam Wainwright, which feels weird, but he hasn't looked great since coming back. He's up to five starts and his ERA is 6.15, and he faces a really tough Rangers team for tonight. So the Rangers, to me, going to be the third stack behind the Phillies and the Reds. Velocity has been an issue for Wainwright. His cutter is down 1.1 miles per hour from last year, and his curveball is down 0.8 miles per hour. Now, last time out, it was better, and it led to more strikeouts for Wainwright. So that could be a, uh, a sign that he's figured things out, getting healthier, and getting better. But in that game with the increased velo, he let up three barrels. The barrel rate against him is currently 13%, with a 37% hard hit rate. So he's making mistakes and teams are connecting and taking advantage of those mistakes. Wainwright is a very smart pitcher. He may figure that part out, and the velo may rise as he gets further removed from the IL, as we saw in that last start. But we haven't seen that lead to great contact suppression as of yet, and the Rangers are a very good team. 118 WRC plus against righties, 186 ISO. Both those rank second on the slate. We could get burned if Wainwright does turn things around, but I think it's worth the gamble here given the Rangers quality, given the hard contact Wainwright has let up, given the barrels in that last start. I think there is enough here to still feel high about the Rangers from a stacking perspective for tonight. It does help. They just got Mitch Garver back as well from the IL. He was absolutely shredding last year before his injury. 
and then came back, looked great, homeward in his first game back, looked good last night too. He's still probably going to bat lower in the order, probably seventh or so, but similar to Drew Ellis, I think that's okay, even without a plus spot in the order, because we can feel good about him in terms of what he can do individually. I think the offense overall should produce a lot of play and appearances. So I still like Mitch Garver, despite the fact he's batting lower in the order. Very okay with him at $2,800 within Ranger stacks for tonight. Things to watch sticking inside that same game. I think the other side there in the Cardinals is pretty interesting for stacks too. They're facing Martin Perez, who hasn't been as great as he was last year, letting up a lot more hard contact this year. The Cardinals have a 128 WRC plus against lefties, living up to expectations in that regard. So even with the roof likely closed in Arlington, which does downgrade the park factor because it was it's warmer but should be closed, uh, that game in general is fun for hitting. So both sides of Cardinals and Rangers, pretty fun for tonight. The Pirates are facing J.P. Sears, and as mentioned, I don't mind him. It's you know more about the A's, A's bullpen. And it's not like Sears is lights out either. So you combine Sears being an okay pitcher with a really bad bullpen behind him. I think that does make the Pirates pretty interesting for stacking. Very willing to give them a look and uh, would put them behind the Cardinals, but still on board with them in general for tonight. Finally, the Astros are facing Alec Manoa, who has had a really rough year so far. He has had some more strikeouts recently, but still not overwhelming. And... I think that I'm still skeptical that he's fully turned things around. Now he's facing the Astros and the Astros are improving as they get healthier, but they've also got a lot of guys who steal and the Jays have had a lot of trouble with limiting base runners so far this year. So guys who run Jeremy Pena, Kyle Tucker, guys like that, they might have more interest, uh, more appeal for tonight because they're facing the Jays. So I would say the Astros are behind the Pirates and the Cardinals in terms of the secondary stacks, but still a very good stack and one I'd be willing to go to despite hoping Alec Manoa does turn things around eventually. Let's finish things up here with the Dinger calls for today. The boring one, got to go uh, against Wainwright given all the barrels he's allowed and go to Adelise Garcia. Garcia has crushed righty so far this year. Just a phenomenal player. And again, from a DFS perspective, even if the home runs don't wind up being there, you can pay out and get good bang for your buck out of Garcia, even without a home run. So Adelise Garcia has been in a homer drought recently. I think he snaps it for tonight, gets back in that column. So Garcia is the boring home run call for today. The fun one, let's go Spencer Steer facing off against Tehran. Tehran, you do kind of want to skew uh, towards the lefties and Steer is not that, but decent power playing at great American ballpark. Uh, puts the ball in the air. So his salary is not low. You're not like getting a fun home run call from a salary perspective. If, if we're going for that, I'd probably go Garver or Ellis, but um, I do like steer quite a bit. So let's go with Adelise Garcia and Spencer steer as a home run calls. But again, Garver and Ellis two fun value plays uh, who I would be checking out for tonight. If you want to save some salary. That's all we got here for today on the solo shot. Again, I think it's a fun slate given all the fun stacking options. Hopefully Andrew Abbott is added to the player pool eventually over on FanDuel so we can have one more pitching option at our disposal. We'll see how things play out there. Do not forget to subscribe to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed to get these podcasts as they go live. Also, check out the solo shot over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Just subscribe to the FanDuel YouTube page. If you like what you hear there, leave us a thumbs up. We appreciate all of you on YouTube as always. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for this Monday night. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for a robust Tuesday slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.